Good morning, folks. We've got a number of topics to hit today and a special video coming later this afternoon. We'll hit radio signals, preparing for solar cycle 25, galactic dust and climate change. We're starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com and we're finding the last day was about the incoming southern coronal hole. Active areas are turned over the limb, so this is our primary feature on the sun, with a good chance of having its intensified solar wind this weekend, while for the time being, the streams have descended back into ambient quiet territory, geomagnetism as well. I wanted to give a nod to this because I did a video on the Suspect Sky channel a few months ago about the ridiculousness. They keep using radio telescopes to search for signs of life, but this is nonsensical. This wasn't the case when SETI was invented, but we now know that M dwarf stars are the most common. They have planets and are by far the most likely place to find life in the universe. Problem is, M dwarf stars are so active that there is going to be virtually no way to detect unnatural radio signals. It's like trying to watch someone standing on the sun holding a flashlight. Might get drowned out, don't you think? Let's move on to two articles indicative of the next level analysis ongoing to understand how a major solar storm will unfold. This is the Earth side of the equation, not the sun, solar flare, CME, and solar wind. And the manner in which these solar storms evolve at Earth plays a critical role in where the energetic aspects most affect the Earth system. Day side, night side, or for the global inductions, the grid killers of the solar storm event to come, it's also a satellite killer due to internal charging. We are in the ramping up stages of cycle 25, like late 2009 or early 2010 from cycle 24. We've got five or six years of maximum coming up. And up next, let's go to the galactic scale. We're looking at dust and how tricky it can be. Is it accelerating or re-emitting light from stars? Are those collision-based energetic signatures or photoionization of the region? If it's blocking our visibility, do we really know what we're looking at behind it? Here, they suggest that nearly a 2x error in timescale estimates are possible when the sight line is polluted with dust. Folks, indeed, dust actually accounts for a good amount of dark matter. They keep finding the dust and its tricks of hiding cosmic reality. It stands alongside other normal matter and their electromagnetic interactions is what's being missed. And folks, this is the subject of our special video coming out later today. We have described how the cosmology leads to the solar forcing of quakes and weather, the cyclical micronova and galactic current sheet, the elegant symphony of the magnetic event taking on the entire solar system and nearby stars. You may have read about a crisis in cosmology, but what do they mean, and how bad is it really? That's coming up after lunchtime. Lastly, folks, we're going to hit the climate here, and it's challenging, we know. And for a nod to the greatest challenges facing modelers of the planet, we've got a grand challenge paper. There was even a couple areas of uncertainty and scientific or mathematical impropriety I didn't know about, and much of the mystery will end up being found in the oceans. Their heat uptake, their heat storage, their heat transport, and global climate control. We've previously mentioned the pitifully bad data and estimates used in models, and here we find that the upper ocean heat estimations can be off by 13%. Not only that, but the spread between the method readings has grown since 1990. It's getting worse, not better. It's like they're moving backwards. And folks, I'll say it plainly. We can have both. Both the environmental righteousness to condemn pollution and want a clean planet, but also to get the climate science correct. Right now, the science is terrifyingly off, much more so than the legit want to end pollution. And sadly, our mistake in the science may cost us our way of life, because Earth's a snitch, just like dusty plasma in the universe. And with the climate playlist listed right below this video, you can learn more. That climate material is also on our channel homepage and at the homepage of suspiciousobservers.org. It's probably going to be a cold future. We greatly appreciate your support. Special video coming tonight, as I mentioned. Watch and catch up with the playlists and videos we've got on our channel or our website. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. And of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.